So why does the stomach have ligaments? How does the lesser and greater curvature develop? And what is the greater momentum? So welcome to this short video on the development or embryology of the stomach. This is a very shortened version of the one I did on the foregut. So if you haven't seen the embryology of the foregut, I encourage you to have a look. So the stomach as we know it, looking like this, um, doesn't, start up, doesn't start out like this. So how does it become looking like this? So this, in this video we'll go through this. Some important learning outcomes that I want you to get from this are um, the most important ligaments uh, that develop out of both the greater momentum and the lesser momentum and essentially how does the curvatures start to develop from essentially a straight gut tube. <clears throat> so let's start with this image here. So this is a four week embryo. What we've done is we've cut it mid-sagittally. We are pulled off the left part of it and we're looking straight in. So here's the head, the eye, this is going to be the mouth. So all this blue structure that I've drawn is essentially the gut tube. And as we've covered before, we know that the gut tube is broken into three components, the foregut, the midgut, and the hindgut. Predominantly what we're going to focus in is a section of the foregut today, which is how the stomach comes about. So we've got the mouth going down and we can see kind of a bud occurrence. This is going to be liver, sorry, the lungs, and this is going to be the important region of today, which is this region, which is the stomach. But continuing on, we've got a loop going out of the um, connecting stalk, which is going to be the mid gut, and then we go down to the hind gut where it's going to connect at this point at least with um, the urinary system. Now, if I was to do a cut through here, so a cut cross sectional cut, remove the top part and look down, we're going to see this image. So in the middle suspended is the gut tube. So that's going to be the developing stomach, which is also what I'm going to do here as well. Now, if you look behind it, what we've got here is this black circle. So this would be developing out here all the way along the embryo. And this is going to be the neural tube. So it's going to be the spinal cord. So slightly in front of that is going to be the developing vertebra. So that's going to be the body of the vertebra. And then in front of that, we've got the dorsal aorta, which is going to be important for feeding into the gut tube throughout the whole length. Now, all this area in here is the silomic cavity, which is going to be the abdominal cavity. Now that's continuous all the way through, but it will start to close off and change in its orientation as we start to develop. Okay. Now suspended off the back wall. So this is the back wall, the dorsal wall. So this would be along here like so. What we can see in red, okay, is two slips of connective tissue. Okay, one on the left side, so this is the left side, and one on the right side. And this is essentially peritoneum, okay. All around here is parietal peritoneum, this is going to be visceral peritoneum, okay. So this is obviously going to be the peritoneal cavity, which becomes also important once we start to develop and move things around. So what you can see is we've got this left sp slit, or sp split should I say, and then a, a right one. Um, here as well. And at the back, it's going to merge together. So you've got two um, bits of peritoneum coming together and joining, as well as the front two bits coming together and joining. Okay, so this is important to know. Now, the, as I said, the whole way, so this structure at the back, so what's suspending the gut tube to the back wall is the two slips of peritoneum, and that's going to be now renamed as the dorsal mesentery. Okay. And that will actually be all the way down the gut tube. So all the way the gut tube has this dorsal mesentery like here. Okay. The whole lot. Very important. Now, just in the region here where the stomach develops, which is going to be what we're doing now, it can be renamed to the dorsal mesogastrium because gastrium means stomach. Whereas going to the front, this ventral, which will be the ventral mesentery, which only happens in the foregut, so it actually stops about here. So all the rest doesn't have the ventral part, okay? Which again is important for the develop now. So what we have is two slips of peritoneum to the back wall, that's the dorsal meson 
now we're going to call it mesogastrium, and then the two slips which is going to the front, which is the ventral me mesogastrium. And that's going to be the gut tube, which is for today going to be the stomach or develop into the stomach. On either side in green, that's going to be the vagus nerve supplying the gut tube. And as you can see at this point, it's on the left and on right. So we're going to call it the left vagus and the right vagus. Now, so that's about fourth week. What's going to start to happen is we're going to have at about this region here, we have an outpot out pocket in the occurring both in the front and the back so at the back we're going to start to develop a pancreas okay that's going to be the dorsal pancreas and at the front we're going to have a well at this point it's just going to be a button that's going to go into the liver now an important structure coming from the neck that's going to come down and reside in here is a structure known as the septum transversum and that's going to be the precursor for the diaphragm essentially and what's going to happen is the liver coming off this bud is going to grow up into it so the liver is going to start to grow into this slip okay remember this was called the visa the ventral mesogastrium whereas the back what we're going to start to see here forming in the back is these mesoclimal clusters which is going to be the spleen now jump forward a few weeks and you can see this the um, liver starting to develop quite extensively, but we've still got the ventral mesogastrium joined to the liver and also that mesogastrium going around the liver to the front wall. So that just means the liver's getting bigger, okay? But now the mesogastrium, because it's got between kind of structures, we've got between the stomach, developing stomach and the liver, that's gonna be now renamed to a ligament and that's going to be renamed to a ligament. So a ligament is essentially going to be a structure that either joins between two organs or between an organ and a body wall. Now, collectively speaking, this part here between the stomach and the liver is going to be renamed to the lesser omentum. And we'll cover that a bit later in more depth. But it's just important to know that that continuation of the, the ventral mesogastrium is now got the liver grown into it and then continues still to the, the front wall, okay? Whereas the back, what we can start to see now at the back is we see the spleen starting to grow up into it, okay? This is the dorsal mesogastrium, which is this. And we've also got a bit of this structure in here, which is the dorsal pancreas growing into it, okay? So we've got two structures in the dorsal mesogastrium. That's also important to know, and I'll explain now how this develops. So, we're now gonna jump to this point, but looking at the tube just in its long cylindrical form. So this is just going down like this, but we're looking in like this. So, at the front of it, we would have, like this, running down the front, would be the ventral mesogastrium, and then at the back, we've got the dorsal mesogastrium. Remember, it's got two slips. That's the way it forms. So, at the, approximately at the fourth week, what starts to happen is this tube will start to have some unequal growth. So, at the back wall, the back of it, the back of the cylinder, starts to bulge out. So, it starts to bulge like this. Okay? So, more cells start to grow at the back. Okay? So, bulging at the back. And at the same time that happens, the whole tube turns. So, it turns 90 degrees so that means this goes around that way and this comes around this way 90 degrees so it's a 90 degrees clockwise turn turn so as it's turning the back is growing okay so what we start to see is this will start to pouch out like this okay so it will start to pouch out while this is probably coming in a bit okay as it's turned and as a result what happens of the turning what was once the left now comes at the front what was once at the right goes to the back and so we can see this turn happening like so because remember the left vagus right vagus but now what happens is the left vagus is at the anterior and the right vagus is at the posterior and this is part of the reason why in the adult now we have the left vagus nerve supply more the anterior surface and the right vagus supplying the posterior surface of the stomach 
Now, so that's the 90 degree turns. Now, as the mid gut's out here doing its turn, okay, what it's going to do is cause the stomach to turn again. But this is in a different plane. That plane was in a longitudinal plane. This one's going to go in an anterior posterior plane. So what it will do is now turn 90 degrees like this. So what happens, that was once, and we had the midline here, here, so that was once in the midline, and so was that. But the way that the stomach turns now is the pylorus, which is this end here, starts to go out to the right and up, and this one goes to the left and a bit down. And this is how you essentially start to get the formation of the stomach now, where you have the esophagus, esophagus coming in, and it's kind of more to the, to the left, whereas the pylorus has gone up and gone up to, to the right. Okay, and then obviously a continuation down there would be into the duodenum. And so that's how you're getting the formation of um, the liver as we know it. Now, coming off, remember that was the back wall, but this, is, this was all the back wall. Okay, so this has got all that dorsal mesentery, which is going down at it like this now. That's going to be renamed now to the greater omentum. Okay, whereas the lesser curvature here, that was the ventral mesentery, which was the front part, and that's going to be renamed to the lesser omentum. Now, we'll start with the lesser omentum. Sitting off into here is the liver. Okay, so the liver is going to be sitting in here. Okay, all right. And so where you have the continuation of the lesser omentum from the liver to the stomach, that's going to be renamed. Well, it's still the lesser omentum, but you can have two parts to it. You can have the liver to the stomach, which we now call the hepatogastric ligament, which has the left and, gastric, left and right gastric arteries in it. Whereas the part of the liver, still the lesser omentum going down from the liver to the duodenum, this part here, would be the hepatoduodenal ligament, which is important because in that structure running through like this would be three important structures being the portal vein, hepatic artery, and the bile duct, and that's the, the triad, the hepatic triad. So this is, becomes important because this can be clamped off by the surgeon to prevent bleeding when there's any kind of surgical procedure. Now this point here becomes, this is the, the lower margin or the free margin of the lesser omentum, which becomes important because this is a, an access area to go from this greater sac into here now. So as we can see the liver starting to grow up, so the, the liver will actually grow up into here like so. And so we've now got a little cavity left behind, which was once all of this is now behind. This is known as the lesser sac or the lesser um, bursa. Whereas all this out here is the greater sac. Now the only way you can get into that sac is up through the lesser edge, which is from just under that lower margin up in behind. Okay, and that's a foramen, the epiplotic, epiplotic foramen. Epiplotic just means a mentum. Sometimes that's also known as the foramen of Winslow. So a surgeon could go up into that space to get access behind here. Now the continuation, so if you continue from the liver to the front wall, here like so, that actually becomes the falciform ligament, like there. Now just for completion, remember you've got the umbilical artery coming in from the mother, and that's going to go up into that ventral mesen mesentery here, or the ve ventral mesogastrium, which goes into the liver, okay, and then once you, the baby's born, that becomes obliterated. So that little part of the vein that was once into the falciform ligament is the lower part of that, and that becomes the ligamental teres, or the round ligament, and that was the obliterated umbilical um, vein. So that's essentially the lesser omentum, and you, so you could see two ligaments come out of it, and you can see some important structures that developed into it. Now let's go to the greater omentum. So what happens with the greater omentum, and this is the, probably the most difficult to get your head around, as it grew and grew, the greater curvature, and started to rotate, all that um, dorsal mesentery or dorsal mesogastrum becomes all floppy. So it kind of flops down. And as a result, which you can see on this image, so this is a sagittal, this is a hard one, Get a sagittal cut, so here's your stomach, okay, and here's that dorsal mesogastrium flopping down, okay. So as it flops down, 
you're going to have the spleen in here and the pancreas in here. But below it, you've got this structure. This is a sagittal cut. So a, a structure going across like this. And this is the transverse colon. Okay. So what happens is this floppy two slipped peritoneum, two slipped peritoneum will start to come together and merge. Okay. And they will come in and close together. So as that does so, as this joins together, we get a continuation. So I'll draw that in. So we have this structure that comes down and joins in together like so. Like so. And this becomes the greater omentum. Well, at least the lower margins. And this is sometimes also known as the apron of the abdomen. So this flops down in front of the transverse colon. Okay. Now that portion, this is all still the greater omentum. That lower portion, which is kind of this part here, where it connects to the transverse colon, that's known as the gastrocolic ligament. Okay. Which would be a, possibly that part there. Whereas another section that kind of goes across to the developing spleen, this is the developing spleen here, is going to be the gastrosplenic ligament. Okay, so that's the gastrosplenic ligament, still part of the greater omentum, or once was part of the greater omentum. Now this is the lower part of the, um, the sac here, so this is where you come up behind it, behind the stomach. Okay, and then from the spleen to the back wall, like this part here, this part here, this is where the pancreas is developed, but the way that the pancreas um, further developed is it flopped onto the back wall, like so. It has the, the mesentery over the top of it, but it does have a continuation to the spleen. Okay, now this ligament from here to the back wall is known as the, which would be here to here, would be known as the spleen. To essentially the developing kidney so that would be the spleno renal ligament even though that's got a bit of the pancreas in it particularly the tail of the pancreas will come out so in that ligament you've got the tail of the pancreas and the vessels of the spleen so the splenic artery and artery and vein so that's basically all the structures that have developed from the stomach and this is explains why we have all this strange anatomy in that region with omentums, ligaments, curvatures, and so forth. So just to recap, we've seen that the stomach does two forms of rotation and in doing so, with an unequal growth, we start to have a greater and lesser curvature. And the way that it orientates is now the greater is more pointing to the left, the less has gone to the right. Now the ligaments that come out of the left, you've got two main ones that go to the um, to the liver, you've got the hepatogastric ligament and you've got the hepatoduodenal ligament which becomes important for those three structures and access to the lesser sac and a continuation to the front wall which is the falciform ligament whereas at the back we've got this big greater omentum which is the apron. A certain region of it will be the gastrocolic ligament which becomes important for the gastroamental or gastroepiplotic um, blood vessels is going to be in that region, whereas coming to the, the gastrosplenic, going to the spleen, okay, that's a continuation of the gastro, uh, the, the greater omentum, and then from the spleen going to the back wall, the spleen to the back wall is going to be the spleno renal. Sometimes they call it the, the lino, the lino, so it might call gastro lionel or lino renal ligaments. So hopefully, what you've seen how it's developed, why it's so now in the adult. Hopefully it makes a bit more sense and we'll move on to other structures.